Cocos Island, Spanish, Isla del Coco, is an island in the Pacific Ocean administered by Costa Rica, approximately 550 kilometers, 342 miles, 297 nmi, southwest of the Costa Rican mainland. It constitutes the 11th of the 13 districts of Punta Arenas Canton of the province of Punta Arenas. With an area of approximately 23.85 square kilometers 9.21 square miles, the island is more or less rectangular in shape. It is the southernmost point on the North American continent if outer islands are included. The entirety of Cocos Island has been designated a Costa Rican National Park since 1978 and has no permanent inhabitants other than Costa Rican park rangers. Surrounded by deep waters with countercurrents, Cocos Island is admired by scuba divers for its populations of hammerhead sharks, rays, dolphins, and other large marine species. The wet climate and oceanic qualities give Cocos an ecological character that is not shared with either the Galapagos Archipelago or any of the other islands, for example, Malpilo, Gorgona, or Coiba, in the eastern Pacific Ocean. Cocos Island was declared a Costa Rican National Park by means of executive decree in 1978 and designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1997. In 2002, the World Heritage Site designation was extended to include an expanded marine zone of 1,997 square kilometers 771 square miles. In addition, it is included in the list of wetlands of international importance. In 2009, Cocos Island was shortlisted as a candidate to be declared one of the new Seven Wonders of Nature by the new Seven Wonders of the World Foundation, ranking second in the island's category. Thanks to the great diversity of marine life and its waters, Cocos Island was named one of the best 10 scuba diving spots in the world by the Professional Association of Diving Instructors and a must do according to diving experts. Popular dive spots around the island are Bajo Alcyone, Hammerhead Sharks, Manuelina Garden, Coral Garden, and Dos Amigos Grande natural underwater arch formation. For many, the main attractions are the large pelagic fish species, which are very abundant in this unique meeting point between deep and shallow waters. The largest schools of hammerhead sharks in the world are consistently reported there. Encounters with dozens if not hundreds of these and other large animals are nearly certain in every dive. Smaller and colorful species are also abundant in one of the most extensive coral reefs in the southeastern Pacific. Famous oceanographer Jacques Cousteau visited the island several times and in 1994 called it the most beautiful island in the world. Such accolades have highlighted the urgent need to protect Cocos Island and its surrounding waters from illegal large-tail fishing, poaching and other threats. The only persons allowed to live on Cocos Island are Costa Rican park rangers, who have established two encampments, including one at English Bay. Access by civilians is very limited. Tourists and ship crew members are allowed ashore only with permission of island rangers, and are not permitted to camp, stay overnight or collect any flora, fauna, or minerals from the island. Occasional amateur radio deep expeditions are allowed to visit. The island is also very popular in pirate lore. It is said that over 300 expeditions have searched for buried treasure there, such as the Horde of Benito Benito, the Treasure of Lima, and many others. Some small caches have been discovered leading many to believe that the stories of vast pirate treasures are true, though the majority of searches have been unsuccessful. Treasure hunting is strictly prohibited by the Costa Rican government and permits are not being issued. Cocos Island is an oceanic island of both volcanic and tectonic origin. It is the only emergent island of the Cocos Plate, one of the minor tectonic plates. Potassium argon dating established the age of the oldest rocks between 1.91 and 2.44 million years late Pliocene, and it is composed primarily of basalt, which is formed by cooling lava. The island is approximately rectangular in shape, measuring about 8 kilometers times 3 kilometers, 5 miles times 2 miles, with a perimeter of around 23.3 kilometers 14.5 miles. The landscape is mountainous and irregular, the highest point is Cerro Iglesias, at 575.5 meters 1,888 feet. In spite of its mountainous character, there are flatter areas between 200 to 260 in, 660 to 850 feet, in elevation in the center of the island, which are said to be a transitional stage of the geomorphological cycle of V-shaped valleys. Cocos Island has a number of short rivers and streams that drain abundant rainfall into four bays, three of them on the north side, Wafer, Chatham, and Weston. The largest rivers are the Genio and the Pitier, which drain their water into Wafer Bay. Sheer, 90 meter, 300 feet. Cliffs ring much of the island, 
preventing convenient access except at a few beaches, the easiest point of entry is at Chatham Bay. The mountainous landscape and the tropical climate combine to create over 200 waterfalls throughout the island. The island's soils are classified as anticels, which are highly acidic and would be easily eroded by the island's high rainfall on the steep slopes were it not for the dense forest coverage. The climate of Cocos Island is mostly determined by the latitudinal movement of the intertropical convergence zone, which creates cloudiness and precipitation that is constant throughout the year. This makes the climate humid and tropical with an average annual temperature of 26.6 degrees Celsius 79.9 degrees Fahrenheit and an average annual rainfall of over 7,000 mm, 276 in. Rainfall remains high throughout the year, although lower somewhat from January through March and again during late September and October. Numerous oceanic currents from the Central Pacific Ocean, particularly the North Equatorial Countercurrent, converge on the island and also have an important influence. Cocos Island is home to dense tropical moist forests. It is the only oceanic island in the eastern Pacific region with such rainforests and their characteristic types of flora and fauna. The cloud forests present at its higher elevations are also unique in the eastern Pacific. The island was never linked to a continent, so the flora and fauna arrived via long-distance dispersal from the Americas, and the island therefore has a high proportion of endemic species. The island has 235 known species of flowering plants, of which 70 are endemic, nearly 30%. A good comprehensive study on the flora of the island is provided in the journal Proceedings of the California Academy of Sciences. Additionally, 74 species of ferns and fern allies, like apodiophytes and pteridophytes, 128 species of mosses and liverworts, 90 species of fungi, and 41 species of slime molds have been reported. Nevertheless, more exhaustive investigations are expected to reveal many more species. The island has three main plant communities. The coastal forests extend from the coast up to 50 meters 160 feet elevation. Purple coral tree, Erythrina fusca, coconut palm, Cocos nucifera, and pond apple, Anona glabra, are the predominant trees, with an understory of ferns, shrubs of the Rhodiaceae and Solanaceae families, sedges, and grasses and herbaceous plants of the leguminosae and malvaceae families. The inland forests extend from 50 to 500 in, 160 to 1,640 feet, elevation. Palo de Hierro or Heuriki, Sacaglottis holdrigii, Avocado, Ocotia insularis, and the endemic Cecropia pitieri are the most common canopy trees. The trees are festooned at all levels with epiphytic plants, including orchids, ferns, bromeliads, and mosses. The understory includes sedges such as Hypolytra mantplum and various species of ferns and tree ferns, including Cyathea armata and Danaea media. The endemic palm Roosevelta franklinianae is also common. Cloud forests are found at the highest elevations, over 500 meters 1,600 feet, where Melastoma species are predominant. The general vegetation of Cocos Island has greatly changed since the island was first named and described by Europeans. Captain Wafer who visited the island in 1685 and whose name was given to the landing place, describes extensive coconut groves extending inland into the interior of the island. Thor Heyerdahl posited that it was very unlikely that these groves developed naturally, and that pre-European man must once have cleared considerable areas in the ravine bottoms and interior plateaus and ridges, utilizing the clearings for coconut plantations of substantial extent. Heyerdahl theorized that these plantations were used to provide fresh liquid and food for pre-Columbian voyages made by balsa rafts using guara navigation, between Guatemala and northwestern South America. After the Spanish conquest and its consequences, these voyages ended and the tropical jungle recovered the land that had been laboriously cleared by early human hands. The island has over 400 known species of insects, of which 65, 16%, are endemic. The greatest diversity is found among the Lepidoptera and Formicidae. Over 50 species of other arthropods have been described, spiders, centipedes, millipedes, and isopods. Two species of lizard are found on the island, an anole, Anoles townsendii, and a gecko, Spheridactylus pacificus, both are endemic. No amphibians have been reported. Nearly 90 bird species have been reported. The island and neighboring rocks are home to large nesting colonies of migratory seabirds, including the brown booby, Sulalucogaster, Red-footed booby, Sula Sula, Great Frigate Bird, Frigata Minor, White Tern, Gigas Alba, and Brown Nautic, 
and Estellinus. Seven species of land birds inhabit the island, including three endemics, the Cocos cuckoo, Coxizus ferruginus, Cocos flycatcher, Nesotricus ridgeway, and Cocos pinch, Pinaroloxia inornata. The island has no native land mammal species, though five inhabit the island in modern times, pigs, deer, goats, cats, and rats, all of which were introduced by humans. The Costa Rican government has vowed to control the populations of these animals, as they are harmful to the local ecosystems. The rich coral reef, volcanic tunnels, caves, massifs and deeper waters surrounding Cocos Island are home to more than 30 species of coral, 60 species of crustaceans, 600 species of mollusks and over 300 species of fish. These include large populations of yellowfin tuna, thunus albacares, giant mantis, manta birostris, sailfish, Istiophorus platypterus, and sharks, such as white tip reef shark, trianodon obesus, and scalloped hammerhead shark, Sphernolawini. The largest of all species of fish is also present, the whale shark, Rhynchodon typus. In December 2017, a female tiger shark, a species that returned to the waters of Isla del Coco in 2012, after 30 years of not being seen in the area, killed New Yorker Rolina Bundari while she was scuba diving in Manuelita in the Isla del Coco National Park. Other large marine animals include humpback whales, Megaptera noviangli, orcas, or sinus orca, pilot whales, Globicephala macrorhynchus, bottlenose dolphins, Terceops truncatus, and sea lions, Zalophus californianus. There are also Reptiles, hawksbill turtles, Eretmopli zimbricata, green turtles, Chelonia mitas, and olive ridley turtles, Lepidocles olivaceae. The island's largely unperturbed habitats are, nonetheless, under growing human pressure. Illegal poaching of large marine species in and around its protected waters has become a main concern. Growing local and worldwide demand for tuna, shark fin soup, and other seafood is threatening the island's fragile ecosystems. The government of Costa Rica has been openly accused of passivity and even benefiting corruptly from illegal shark fin and other seafood trade to large markets, such as China and other Asian countries. The government has shown some willingness to protect the island's natural riches and prosecute poachers. However, efforts to effectively patrol the waters and enforce environmental laws face big financial and bureaucratic difficulties, as well as being prone to the corruption of local, national and international authorities. Recent events show that large-scale illegal poaching keeps happening. Despite initial hope in stopping and charging poachers, who have been caught with abundant evidence, they have often been quickly released under suspicious circumstances. Also, efforts to raise funds for protection have been dwarfed. Marvin Orlando Surtis, a judge with the local Pantarinas Court of Justice, obscurely allowed 22 poachers caught red-handed to escape the country. Also under highly suspicious and allegedly corrupt circumstances, District Attorney Michael Morales Molina stopped the auction for public benefit of confiscated goods immediately after the spokesman of the large illegal poaching ship Tyuna simply made the request. In his Historia General y Natural de las Indias, 1535, expanded in 1851 from his previously unpublished papers, Gonzalo Fernandez de Oviedo y Valdez discusses the discovery of the island by his contemporary, Spanish navigator Juan de Cabezas, also known as Juan de Grado, in 1526. De Livra, Una Isla Desierta en el Pacifico, La Isla del Coco en los Viajes de Cockburn y Livra por Costa Rica, 1962, 134, tells that the first document with the name Mile de Cacas is a map painted on parchment, called that of Henry II, that appeared in 1542 during the reign of Francis I of France. The Planisphere of Nicolas Deslines, 1556, Dieppe, places this Isle de Cacas about one and a half degrees north of the equator. See also Mario Eboza and Rolando Mendoza, Los Parques Nacionales de Costa Rica, Madrid, 1981. Willem Blau's Grand Atlas, originally published in 1662, has a color world map on the back of its front cover which shows Ida Coco's right on the equator. Frederick de Witt's Atlas, 1680 shows it similarly. The Hondius broadside map of 1590 shows Ida Coco's at 2 degrees and 30 minutes north latitude while in 1596 Theodore de Bry showed the Galapagos Islands near 6 degrees north of the equator. Emmanuel Bowen, in A Complete System of Geography, Volume 2, London, 1747, 586, states that the Galapagos Islands stretch 5 degrees north of the equator.
Cocos Island was annexed by Costa Rica in 1832 by Decree No. 54 of the Constitutional Assembly of the newly independent country. Whalers stopped regularly at Cocos Island until the mid-19th century, when inexpensive kerosene started to replace whale oil for lighting. In October 1863, the ship Adelante marooned 426 Tongan former slaves on the island when it was discovered that they had contracted smallpox and were a danger to her crew. By the time the vessel Tums arrived to rescue them one month later, only 38 survivors were found, the rest having perished from smallpox, Seattle. In 1897, the Costa Rican government named the German adventurer and treasure hunter August Kistler the first governor of Cocos Island and allowed him to establish a short-lived colony there. On May 12, 1970, the insular territory of Cocos Island was incorporated administratively by means of Executive Decree No. 27, making it the 11th district of Puntarenas Canton of the Puntarenas Province. As a district, the island has the postal code of 60110. The island's 33 residents, all of them Costa Rican park rangers, were allowed to vote for the first time in Costa Rica's February 5, 2006, election. However, the rangers are not considered permanent residents of the district. Therefore, the census data considers the island to be uninhabited. Cocos Island has featured heavily in many tales of pirate lore and buried treasure. The first claims of treasure buried on the island came from a woman named Mary Welsh, who claimed that 350 tons of gold, about $16 billion in today's money, raided from Spanish galleons had been buried on the island. She had been a member of a pirate crew led by Captain Bennett Graham and was transported to an Australian penal colony for her crimes. She possessed a chart showing where Graham's treasure was supposed to be hidden. On her release, she returned to the island with an expedition but had no success in finding anything, as the points of reference in the chart had disappeared. Another pirate supposed to have buried treasure on the island was the Portuguese Benito Benito. Though Benito was hunted down and executed, his treasure was never retrieved. Perhaps the best known of the treasure legends tied to the island is that of the fabled treasure of Lima. In 1820, with the army of José de San Martín approaching Lima, Viceroy José de la Serna is supposed to have entrusted treasure from the city to British trader Captain William Thompson for safekeeping until the Spaniards could secure the country. Instead of waiting in the harbor as they were instructed, Thompson and his crew killed the Viceroy's men and sailed to Cocos, where they allegedly buried the treasure. Shortly afterwards, they were apprehended by a Spanish warship. All of the crew except Thompson and his first mate were executed for piracy. The two said they would show the Spaniards where they had hidden the treasure in return for their lives, but after landing on Cocos, they escaped into the forest and were never recaptured. Hundreds of attempts to find treasure on the island have failed. Several early expeditions were mounted on the basis of claims by a man named Keating, who was supposed to have befriended Thompson. On one trip, Keating was said to have retrieved gold and jewels from the treasure. Prussian adventurer August Gisler lived on the island for most of the period from 1889 until 1908 hunting the treasure with the small success of finding a few gold coins. An art project called Treasure of Lima, a buried exhibition, where a container with artwork by different artists was buried in a secret location, took place on the island in 2014. The book Desert Island proposed the highly detailed theory that Daniel Defoe used the Isla del Coco as an accurate model for his descriptions of the island inhabited by the marooned Robinson Crusoe. However, Defoe placed Crusoe's island not in the Pacific, but rather off the coast of Venezuela in the Atlantic Ocean. Robinson's neighboring terra firma is shown on the color map of Jonas Jansen, Amsterdam, depicting the northeastern corner of South America, entitled Terra Firma et Nova Regnum Granitens et Popeyan. It belongs to the early group of plates printed by Willem Blau from 1630 onwards. The property called Terra Firma was the Isthmus of Darien. Crusoe's two references to Mexico are against a South American island as well. The eponymous island in Robert Louis Stevenson's novel Treasure Island seems to have been a fictional composite of several islands about which the author is known to have had direct or indirect knowledge. Cocos Island was among them. Michael Crichton's novel Jurassic Park and the subsequent film adaptations take place on the fictitious Isla Nublar of Costa Rica, which is modeled after Cocos Island. Cocos Gold, a 1950 novel by Ralph Hammond, features the island in buried treasure, along with a mutinous crew aboard the expedition, which starts in England borrowing heavily from Stevenson's Treasure Island.